Today, our champion, Danny Murphy of Concord, New Hampshire, faces the challenge of Fred Spintig, Jr. of Stoughton on camel pin bowling. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Candle Pin Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and I guess you all know by now that right now at this moment I'm a little disorganized. No, but basically you all know that this is uh, a pro program is on videotape. We do our taping right here at Sammy White's Brighton Bowl, and it is always three strings of Candle Pin Bowling with total pinfall determining our winner. Now that winner is rewarded with a handsome trophy from the Ace Trophy Company of Boston. The runner-up receives a smaller but otherwise identical version to indicate he was a participant on our show. We have guaranteed prize money of $1,150. $50 to the winner of each string, and obviously should they tie, they would split it at $25 apiece. $700 goes to the winner. $300 goes to the runner-up. There's an extra $100 available for anyone who gets a 400 series, and Danny Murphy has done that. It's unprecedented. Six consecutive times he's done it. Now, for three marks in a row, any combination of strikes or spares in the same string, that establishes a bonus of $50. Then each subsequent consecutive mark in that same string would be worth $50 a piece as long as he can keep it going. And uh, we have our 1710 high-low jackpot. That's worth $275. If neither one... Uh, handles it then, and is able to do anything with it, then we'll add $25 and do that every week till somebody walks away with whatever has accumulated. And for three strikes in a row, there is an additional bonus of $1,000, and for each successive strike in that same string following those three, $1,000 apiece. Let's get started, shall we, right after this. Thank you. Here is today's challenger, Fred Spintig, Jr. of Stoughton, with a league average of 123. He's been on our show before, but uh, not for quite a while. Not since, uh, golly, not since 1978, as I look up his record here. That's a long time ago. He has a high single of 181 and a high triple of 454. I remind you again that our marksman of the day, which means the bowler with the most marks, will receive a $50 gift certificate from True Value Hardware Store. I've also mentioned to you that we have various means of breaking a tie should they have the same number of marks. The first tiebreaker would be to go to who had the most strikes. And we almost had one there. If they're still tied, then we go to the most bonus pins. So there is the first mark, and it's uh, Fred Spintig, Jr. Today's challenger, as I said, his last appearance on our show was back in 1978. And he lost to Joe Donovan. Joe just missing $100 in bonus money as he rolled a 399. Danny Murphy, our defending champion. And Danny's had a phenomenal run here. Comes a 10. Danny's streak began back on the 7th of July when he defeated Jim Morrow, rolling a 404. Then it was Alex Pendleton whom he beat with a 403. Don Santiago followed and was defeated by Danny Murphy, who rolled a 456. Danny rolled a 414 in beating Dan Gallant. A 400 even in beating Bob Ireland. And then last week, a 438 to defeat Rosario Lechiara. Six consecutive 400s. Oh, baby, another spectacular spare by Danny Murphy, the four horsemen left side and the 10 pin. Now Fred Spintig Jr. coming up, and as you know, working on a spare. He gets six.
two, four, five, and seven. So it's a ten. All right, here's the identical spare leave that Danny just made. Four horsemen left side and the 10 pin. Let's see what Fred Spintig Jr. does with it. And he did not get it. Getting everything in front of it, the, the one and the two and the four, but the seven and 10 are still there. It's a nine. Now Danny Murphy working on that spear in the second. Bonus. He cringed just a bit as he knew that he was going to miss the head pin. However, he still got a six pin drop and is left with four that uh, we would consider not necessarily easy but makeable. One, three, six, and nine. Sort of a half Worcester effect as he punched out the three and the nine. And that time, took it down for a ten. strike that brings us to the point where we take our first good look at the scoreboard here in the first string and that is after four boxes there it is Danny Murphy our defending champion from Concord New Hampshire 46 with two bonus balls to roll and our challenger Fred Spintig Jr. from Stoughton 44 all right fifth box first string challenger Fred Spintig Jr. from Stoughton Fred's marriage, the father of two. He works as a shipper and is representing the Canton Lanes. And because I know of you, there are several of you who keep the entire statistics, I will uh, tell you that his roll off score was 688. Spare! Spare in the fifth. Bonus. Ho! Almost the spread eagle. Danny Murphy tried to uh, make a spare eagle for us, uh, leave a spread eagle uh, spare leave last night on the Channel 5 Sports, which we have every Friday night. That was worth $600, so next week it's going to be worth $650, and the winner of today's match will be on Channel 5 Sports next Friday night in the sports section, trying to leave me a spread eagle and pick up $650. Danny Murphy's first bonus ball gets him a seven-pin drop and a spare lead. No. All right, the fill is eight.
Keith Williams is keeping score on that big scoreboard today, and Bruce Goldman keeping score beside me. Danny Murphy. He thought he had strike, but the kingpin is still there, the five. Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, in his accustomed spot. Oh, baby, and he just had to. He was looking out there, sitting on that uh, line, and, and Danny Murphy lobbed it out there. But as you know, the lob line is a fair distance down. And that landed, fortunately for Danny, this side of the lob line. Fred Spintig, Jr. Freddie has two pieces of wood in back of the three with the three, six, and ten on the right, and the seven pin alone. Two pieces of wood on an angle behind the three pin. Which should go over and get the seven if it's hit properly. It did. And they went. that to fall and one all right so uh, eight is the drop and the fill now the, he's got the seven and eight good wood on an angle against the seven and a piece of wood that's almost perpendicular to that eight and I don't know whether it's in there close enough to touch I can't tell from here well he played it anyway but it did not go over and touch the piece of wood that was against the seven which is what he went. got the eight only Mentioning our regulars, Joanne Panto is our secretary, as I've told you. Don Riley is our statistician. Danny Murphy gets. He doesn't get a break. The object pin right now becomes the four. He's got the four and the uh, five and the seven. And can he do it? No, not quite. Went for that five, hoping to drive it over and get the four and seven. Phil Rubin, of course, is our producer and our director, the man who keeps it all together. We all try to tear it down every once in a while, but he tries to keep it together. Not intentionally, we don't. We've got the four and seven on the left, the ten on the right, and two pieces of wood, neither touching either of the, any of the standing pins. It's sort of that little V down there. Let's see what he can do with it. Wasn't there. A nine. Well, the the winner of this string is still very much in doubt because there are only five pins separating our bowlers, as you see. <coughs> Murphy with a 99 and Spintig with a 94. Now our challenger, Fred Spintig, Jr. All right, just two pins standing, but they're uh, at a kind of a tough angle. It's the one and the eight. Now there's a piece of wood, and I think it's settled there. It's uh, not really behind, but it may help guide the one into the eight. It did. All right. It did. Nice shot. Pretty, pretty, pretty. That was the one and eight with wood. And I really don't think, in retrospect, that the wood had anything to do with it. Big Phil, nine, and a chance for another.
One pin, that's the eight pin, and a piece of wood alongside it. And he'll have to drive into it. He got it. So he has two marks in a row here in the ninth and tenth, and that puts him right now at 123, plus what he gets on the next one. If it turns out to be a strike, it's worth $50 in bonus money and may very well have won another 50 for winning the string. He wanted it. Just four. So it's 127. A fine opening string, 127. Danny Murphy came within one pin of the strike, and again it's the five pin. Single pin to pick up for a spare. And yes, right on. All right, spare. So the winner of this string is still in doubt. Bonus. All right, seven is the fill. The first string will be Fred Spintig Jr. by one pin. Fifty dollars in bonus money goes to Fred Spintig Jr. for winning the first string by one pin. There it is, and we'll tilt up and take a look at it. After one, Fred Spintig Jr. Of Stoughton, our challenger, 127. Our defending champion, Danny Murphy of Concord, New Hampshire, 126. In the middle string, our defending champion leads it off. He's Danny Murphy. Boy, there's a wild looking one, huh? The object pin becomes the three. And then across the back, there's the seven, nine, and 10 piece of wood behind the three and on an angle just touching against it. No. Okay, so it, it winds up as an eight box. He's left with the five, nine, and ten. Two woods on wood on an angle. And no. Okay. He's going now for a nine and hoping for a ten. He got it. Made the ten. Now Fred Spintig Jr., who was leading by one as he came in. Those two little youngsters you see just to his right there sitting in the front seat are his two children, the little girl with the glasses and the little boy with the sort of a beigey brown sweater. And half Worcester left. Still three pin standing. Four, five, and seven. Nine. On the uh, World Candleton Bowling Congress Pro Tour, the September tournament, as you know, when I talk to you, I've said to you many, many times that we tape sometimes several weeks before you actually see the telecast. 
So information that may be fairly fresh to me at the time will be rather old at the time you uh, eventually hear me mention it. But I know you understand why. All right, let's see now whether Freddie can get the seven with Wood up against. He's waiting for it to stop rolling. It has. It rocked the seven pin, but it didn't go down. There it goes. Danny Murphy coming up. Anyway, in that tournament, Tim Lipke was the winner. The men and Carol Mann, the ladies. Danny Murphy has himself a spare leave with a six pin and wood in front of it. All right, spare for Danny. Tim Lipke's score was 1367. This was uh, the Pro Tour held at Boutwell's Bowlmore in Concord, New Hampshire. And that, uh, by the way, is Danny Murphy's uh, lane. Strike on spare for Danny Murphy. I'll give you the, uh, the top five in that. After we watch and see what happens here to Fred Spintig Jr. as he rolls a bonus ball. And the drop is seven. Over on the left, he has the four pin and the eight. Wood alongside. And the ten pin by itself. Made it! Pretty, pretty spare. Nice shot. Yes, sir. Five. And a kind of a tough split, almost a spread eagle. Okay, the nine and ten still there. Seven and ten. Yes, I think I said nine and ten. So it uh, it is a nine box. All right, we're going to take another little break. After four here in the middle string, get you up to date on the score. There it is. Danny Murphy will be coming up with two bonus balls to roll, and he has 48 to Fred Spindig's 50. All right, here's Danny Murphy. He has two bonus balls to roll, and he has two marks in a row. Yeah. Oh, baby, it's going to be tough to make it three in a row. Five and six, and then in the back, seven, nine, ten. Hit the six. So the fill is only six. And now he'll be trying to get at least the middle two. That's the five and nine. Didn't even get the five. So it's a seven box. Close to a strike, everything but the ten pin. Nine pins down, and now he has just missed the ten pin. It's still nine pins down. And it's still nine pins down as Fred Spintig Jr. comes up. The others in that last uh, WCBC Pro Tour, second was Harry Reno with a 1337, then Charlie Milan with a 1326, Bill Gardner a 1314, John Zernike with a 1311. That was a top five. Fred Spintig Jr. has a strike. And as he waits for the pins to be set, the ladies, after Carol Mann's 1218, were Sandy Arvilla with a 1202, Lois Jean Queen 1194, K. 
Kaz Wyszynski with 11.89 and Tony Marie Baldinelli with 11.87. Here's the first bonus ball. And yes, he got a break as the 10 drop. Now he just has two pins to work on. They are the two and the four. Two and four. Yes. Danny. Oh, so close to getting a strike. But the six pin is still there with Wood alongside it. And it's gone. Fair. Fair in the seven. Six was the fill, and he has the one, two, seven, and ten. No wood. Nope. An eight. The second uh, stop on the WCBC Pro Tour, the October tournament. I'll get to that. Gary Carrington was the male winner, 1336, and Kaz Wazinski was the ladies' winner. He with a 1336, she with an 1190. Fred Spinty gets a six drop. The three, five, and six, and ten. That's the cluster on the right. No wood. Oh, he hit the three too full, and it went through. In that October tournament, second was Bob Moran with a 1326. Ray McGurk with a 1320 was third. Steve Vatney, who will be a challenger here in a couple of weeks, a 1313 was fourth. And a tie for fifth between Tom Morgan's 1300 and Mike Shadoff's 1300. Two bowlers from Lynn. Big strike now for Fred Spintig, Jr. He's got a good one working. Danny has the diamond to try to make for a spare, and we know that that is not easy. Nope, the diamond wins again. Ten. Behind Kaz Wazinski in that last tournament, Marianne Kelly, 1184, Stacia Zernike, 1178, Joanne Ruzano, 1175, and Tony Marie Baldinelli, 1170. And the next tournament will be next weekend at the Rollaway Lanes in Biddeford, Maine. That's November 8th, 9th, and 10th. Here's a spare leave. Let's see whether Danny can do anything with this. Nope, he missed it, and he knew it as soon as he released it. Nine. Put, put in, puts him right now at 113. And at 239. All right, here's Fred Spintig. Now he has two bonus balls to roll. That's the first one. Look at that. He came in. This is uh, one of the, what shall I say, one of the things that makes Candlepin bowling so tough. He was able to put that ball right down the middle and got, got the one, eight, and nine, but left the five. So eight was the fill. And it's a 10 box. 
And he has won the second string, so give him another $50. Finish, big strike. 133. And two bonus balls for Fred Spintig Jr. to roll right now. Spread Eagle. The way he's going right now and Piling on a lead, he may very well be the one who will be trying for to lead me a spread eagle next Friday night. It'll be the winner of this match who will be doing it on the sports channel five next Friday night. A biggie. Danny with a kind of a worried look, and Fred with a obviously a Kind of a happy look right now as we tilt up and take a look at what the score is at the end of two. It is challenger Fred Spintig Jr. of Stoughton, 266. Defending champion Danny Murphy of Concord, New Hampshire, 239. Here is our challenger Fred Spintig Jr. who is now in the lead. 27 pin lead. By the way, next week's challenger will be a bowler who's been a champion on our show many times, Al Lacey from Lynn. One, two, and seven he got, but the nine is still there. It goes for a ten box. Seven, eight, ten, and three pieces of wood between the one and the ten, all lying in a favorable position. Yes, it went, it went, and he shakes his head. Falling for Danny Murphy. Seven and nine. He takes the seven out. So it's a nine pin drop. There's a break. Everything went this time except the nine. And he has favorable wood lying in front of it. He does not miss that. So he has a spare in the second. Each bowler with a spare in the second. Spintig. It's a seven drop. Seven alone over on the left. On the right, the six and ten, and two pieces of favorable wood lying across the six pin. Ooh, he sent one of those pieces of wood spinning over there, and had it just touched that seven pin, it would have cut it, probably would have kicked it all the way back here the way it was spinning. It's a 10. Oh. 
strike. And he shakes his head that he's coming back because it's sort of like, uh, hey, when you're hot, you're hot. And again, he's shaking his head as he looks over toward Don Riley. I'm, and Danny Murphy had the same feeling when he was red hot. Last week, rolling his 438, and as, I, as you know, has had six consecutive 400s. It's sort of as if you feel every time you roll it down there, something's going to happen, something good. And in this instance, the, the good things aren't happening for Dan. He had the one, then a wood, then the four, and the seven, and then the ten over on the right. And that's what he intended to do, but it's for a ten instead of a spare. to help he has a triangle that is made up of the two four five there's wood behind it but it's too far behind it and then he has the ten pin made those three and one of them uh, rolled over and is now going in the gutter in front of the ten so it's a ten Fred Spintig Jr. It will add to his lead. He's already up by 29 pins and he has two bonus balls to roll. Here's the first. That gets him four more. Another big spare. Is it going to fall? It's rocking back and forth. Ooh, he wanted that pin to go. It's the four pin and it's still standing. Now it's three, six, ten over here. He was trying to brush the three and have it go over there and get the four. Possible. Two, four, five, and seven. Made it. Okay, there's a spare. He's down 39 pins. So, a lot of pins to make up. Eight more and the possibility of another spare with the four and seven alone over on the left. Piece of wood, which is, uh, well, it's just to the left of the four and in front of the seven. It goes and he has two marks in a row. In completed uh, boxes so far, it's a 37 pin lead. For this man, Fred Spintig Jr., our challenger. On the right, three, six, ten. On the left, four and seven. And a piece of wood that may help. Oh, got everything except the four. Beautiful shot. He took out the three, six, ten. And one of those pieces of wood went, uh, that had been knocked down, when one of those pins had gone over there and got the seven, but it missed the four. That's the only thing, of course, that Danny Murphy can hope for is that Fred does not continue to mark. Oh 
Now he has the two pin on the left alone and the six pin. And they uh, that's a tough tough angle to try to move. But he'll try to do something. There. Nope. He's opposite a pair of tens. He's working on a spare right now. This is the bonus. As soon as he let it go, he put his hands on his head in one of those sort of like in horror. Oh, no. Here comes a half Worcester right, and it was just two. Nope, the four pin wouldn't go. Everything went except the four. Three boxes left, and he trails by 34 pins. 34 down. No break, because he has the seven and eight side by side. One piece of wood out here, just about where the number one pin would be, on a slight angle, and obviously he will use it. Nothing happened. He just barely touched it. It moved. And the ball was diverted and both pins are still standing. So it's a nine and he's now down to. He's trailing by 35 pins and with two boxes to go. did it right there down 35 pins and you're and you're uh, the man that is leading you just fires a strike first bonus ball gets him seven and leaves him the four seven on the left and the six pin over on the right Good try. He, a good try, but he still gets just one more. And a nine. A 129. Danny Murphy gets himself a tough split here if he's going to try to get himself a mark because he has no wood and over on the left it's the two four seven on the right it is the six and ten beautiful try with no wood but the six is still there $275 in our high low jackpot. And no mark for Danny in the 10th. And $200 in the home viewer jackpot. And it's a nine. And Danny comes over and congratulates Fred Spintig Jr. and taps him on the shoulder. It's been a great rain for Danny with six consecutive 400s. And that's what the applause is for. Everybody knows that you eventually have to uh, lose some of these things. And uh, in this instance, it turned out that that uh, Danny wasn't able to do it. The final score, 395 to 352. We have $200 in our home viewer jackpot. The number that we're looking for is anywhere from 737 to 757 will be the winner of that. 
And that sounds like a pretty good one, one that maybe has been guessed a few times. However, if we're nowhere near that when I draw the card, that person at least will be rewarded with these prizes. A Regina electric broom. No more vacuuming. From now on, it's the Regina electric broom. The lightweight, easy way to make cleaning a breeze. The Regina electric broom makes a perfect gift. And an Acromill 16-inch toolbox. Offers premium capacity in a minimum size box. Constructed to carry up to 60 pounds of tools. Acromill toolbox to help out with all your home improvements. And Peterson's 5-inch vice grip locking pliers with wire cutter. Tremendous power in a small tool. Peterson vice grip pliers. Strong enough for big jobs. Small enough to carry in your pocket. Okay, let's see now. That's 737 to... Let's see what I got here. For 747. This is uh, from uh, Bertha Eden of Concord, New Hampshire, and her guess is 710. Okay. So, all uh, right. So, we'll, we'll, we'll add $50. Okay, we've got $275 right down there, and Fred, you have uh, first shot at it. Pick a lane and fire away. All right, Danny. Okay, Daniel, come over here, would you please? And Fred behind him. Let me shake your hand, you son of a gun. You had a run here, I want to tell you, with, with uh, six consecutive 400s, and Don Riley just figured out that including today, you have averaged w just over 136 per string during the entire time you've been here. That is some bowling. Need three of those today. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. $300 for you, and you get the smaller version of this, and uh, you come back and see us again. It was a pleasure having you. Pleasure being here. And oh, I'll see you in the big show, I'm sure. I hope so. <laughs> okay, Freddie, you did it, huh? How about that? You get the big one here. You also get a $50 gift certificate from True Value Hardware Store. You get Florence Greenleaf's book of candle pin bowling, the history of it. You get uh, $700 plus $150 for winning all three strings. And with all those marks, you didn't put three together, huh? Uh, well, all right, you put three together or, or four or five or six because you're gonna be challenged by a pretty tough guy next week. You know that, Al Lacey from Lynn, okay? Hey. All right, we'll see you then. Don Gillis with the whole crew. Bye-bye, everybody.